Welcome to Midwest Magnum. I'm Kurt. I'm Daryl. Today we're going to show you uh, a Ruger American Predator in 308 that came in this disgusting stock. So after we changed out the Magpul, we went ahead and put on a primary arms fir first focal plane, um, pimped it out with a muzzle brake, put on a Magpul bipod, and created what I'm very happy with is an awesome hunting rifle. My concern was, though, the cost of ammo. How do I become proficient in that? Uh, 308 can be around 70 cents and up around. So if you haven't taken a look, review our last uh, review on the Tull Ammo 308. Awesome ammo at 70 cents around. But even at that price, that gets expensive. So I bought this American, or sorry, Ruger American 22 Rimfire. Pretty much the same gun, same trigger pull, everything. I can get good muscle memory practice with this gun at about eight cents around. Uh, that way I could practice a lot cheaper and make sure that when hunting season comes, I'm ready to go. We were practicing with this out on the range at the Know Your Limits, another video we've done, check that out. Great, great target practice. And noticed it was slightly off. So Daryl knows how he can, a little trick we can do on this to increase the accuracy of that. Um, and he's going to share that with us today. So you ready to go? Absolutely. All right, let's do it. What we're going to try and do today is improve the accuracy on this Ruger American Rimfire. It's showing adequate accuracy, but I know these can shoot better than that. Ruger rimfires use two uh, front and rear action blocks. And a lot of times we, you'll find when you disassemble these, they're not making great contact with the barrel. So in other words, you're only using a small percentage of that actual action block to lock the rifle into place. What we're going to see if we can do is literally, we're going to bed a rip, this rimfire action using nothing more than some aluminum foil tape. See if we can improve the, our contact area on the action blocks to the barrel receiver and the receiver itself. Today's video is brought to you by Central Arms, offering retail gun sales specializing in special orders for hard-to-find firearms, ammunition, and accessories. We get a lot of our inventory from Central Arms, and they are awesome. Visit their website at centralarmsmp.com. First thing we want to do is we're going to pull the action out of the stock. No magazines in place. We want to remove our bolt. Bolts out. The Ruger rim fires use a 1 8 Allen setup here and here. With the action screws removed, we can separate the stock from the barreled action. We'll set the barreled action aside for now. Our focus will be on the stock itself. This is the front, this is your rear action blocks for this rim fire. These action blocks can be very loose. Sometimes they're tight. This is part of what we're trying to fix right now. Taking a quick look at the action blocks, we're making very minimal contact on the front and basically only on this side, on this rear. So it, these will definitely benefit from adding the foil tape. This front action block has proven to be very tight in the, in the stock itself. Normally, they'll fall out. This one is so tight, I really don't want to remove it simply because the whole premise is we're trying to tighten the action up. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the stock and do the foil treatment right in the stock where this rear is rather loose and will come out. Disassembly is very simple. This pin will basically almost fall out on its own. So take that in mind and you don't lose that pin. This is what holds it all together. From there, you can remove all your parts. Press in on the plunger, and you've completely disassembled. Now with the rear action block disassembled, we can go ahead and degrease it, and we'll go ahead and apply aluminum foil. This one is surprisingly smooth. I don't feel any rough edges or burrs. I'm currently working on a Ruger Precision Rimfire that has nothing like this one. It took me quite a bit of work to get that one smooth. We'll go ahead and post pictures of that one. 
This is adhesive aluminum tape. It's great for working on your ductwork at home and can be useful working on firearms. Simply apply, kind of stick it down. It tears very easily. Is that overkill? Heck yeah. Make our notch for our ejector. Typically, this will tear from the sides quite easily. Just follow right along. We're ready to go. Normally this would be removed, but as it's fitting so tightly into the stock, it just seems better to leave it there. The whole idea is we're trying to tighten this up. Doesn't make sense to remove it if it's already that tight. One thing you might find is if these blocks are re really loose in the action is you can add foil to the sides to tighten them up within the action itself. This gun seems fine. I don't think we're gonna need to do that on the sides. This job doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. The idea is we're bedding the stock and that barrel to action together, trying to get more contact surface area in play to improve our accuracy. Not too bad. Another way we're going to try and improve our accuracy is to replace the stock uh, Ruger magazine plunger with a kid plunger. It's machined to a much tighter tolerance. It's going to have a heavier spring in it to keep the magazine as tightly fitting as possible to prevent any motion of the magazine, especially the longer magazines will benefit from a kid plunger. This is the kid plunger. This is the original. We'll go ahead and reassemble, plunger, magazine release, ejector. Last step will be to line up the 
three spots and put in the pin. Next step, back to the action this will go. Next, we'll want to put the action back in the stock. Return the action screws and slowly, evenly begin to tighten them. These are one eighth screws. Final step torque each of the action screws to 35 inch pounds. Return the bolt. We went ahead and did a, a pre upgrade accuracy test on this gun. We've got some footage of that. So what we'll be doing when we get this all back together, we're going to go back to the range and see what sort of improvements we've gotten. Our final step now will be to take it back to the range and test its accuracy. This gun has not been cleaned since our last range outing. And we're going to be using the same ammo to make certain if we have an accuracy improvement, we will be able to see it. Clearly, by the looks of this target, we have seen some accuracy improvements. We can continue to improve our accuracy by experimenting now with different types of ammunition to see if the gun has a preference. We can also consider a second layer of, of the of, of adhesive foil, as I've done on my Ruger Precision, to make up any other discrepancies that could be in the bedding. Another option would be to experiment with the torque spec on your action screws. Ruger specifies 35 inch pounds. But you will find that if you change your torque specs, you will change the accuracy of the gun. There will be a sweet spot. It may be between 15 and 40 inch pounds. So don't be afraid to try different torque specs as well as you're experimenting with your ammo. Watch for our next review on the Savage Access 2 Precision, a budget-friendly, long-range gun. Is it worth the money? <laughs>